My name is Heidi Prakash Boyd. I am the owner of Prakash Organics, an organic medical grade skincare line, and also a master esthetician. And I got into the beauty industry around age 25, started reading articles and had a deep passion for skincare ingredients and how they interact with the skin. From there, I went to aesthetic school and got my master's aesthetics license in Washington. And I also have an aesthetic license in the state of Oregon. And today we're gonna learn how to properly microneedle. I know there is a lot of information out there about microneedling and a ton of videos that you can watch on microneedling, but a lot of it is being done incorrectly. I got my training for an amazing nurse from Europe and microneedling has been over in Europe for a very, very long time now. It just recently came to the United States. So I got some like old school advanced training and it's completely changed the game on my treatments and I wanna share it with you today. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to set up our field to be sterile, especially for people who are estheticians that haven't really been in the medical side of things. Having to have a sterile field is completely new to you. So the first thing that I want to do is on the treatment table that we're using, I get these disposable pads, also kind of known as puppy pads, and I utilize these a lot. Um, pretty much everything you want to use in this treatment, you do want to be disposable. So I completely understand people wanting to be green and earth conscious, but when you're dealing with blood, this is not the time. So pretty much everything we're going to use today besides a few things are going to be disposable. And I encourage you to do the same because you have way less chances of cross contamination. So first we're just gonna take our puppy pad and we're gonna cover the whole top of the table where the client's head is gonna be. Like so. When I go to get started is I take my trash can out of its covered receptacle and I want it open on purpose and in front of me. So once I get to the actual microneedling part and I'm touching blood, anytime I have a disposable, I can just instantly drop into the trash can, no cross contamination. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do with my lovely model, Miss Shannon, is we're gonna get her hair out of the way. This is another thing that I would prefer to use disposable in the event it gets some blood on it but I do not have one today, so we're gonna use the cloth one, and I'll just make sure to pull it higher up on the hair so that there's no chance of getting blood on it. And we are just going to go ahead and start with her cleansing. I am gonna do a double cleanse. Double cleanser. I'm going to use the One Love Organics because it's my absolute favorite. And then I'm gonna do a second cleanse with the Sonic device with Cosmetics Rx Clean. This has 10% lactic acid in it. Of course, you can use whatever cleanses you like, but I highly recommend that you do use a sonic device because the pores are very hard to clean. So before cleansing your client, I always kind of like to let them know like, hey, I'm coming in. I don't like to just instantly like touch the face because it can be a little too shocking to the body. This is the only time during the treatment that they're gonna get any fluff. So if you want to, you know, take some time and really give them a lovely face massage with the oil cleanser, feel free to do that, but this is kind of it. So take your moment. I do want you to be super thorough with your cleaning. A lot of the times we get in the habits of just doing our motions and we forget about all the tiny little nooks and crannies and creases. So really just take your time and make love to their face basically with the cleanser. I also, you really wanna take a moment and um, really cleanse the eye area if they have any type of eye makeup or mascara on in any way. You don't want tiny little color particles being microneedled into the tissues. So it's really important you just really take your time and get the skin clean. I also will be putting gloves on um, once I'm done cleansing. But again, because this is the only time they're gonna get some love, I wanna give them the one-on-one -on -one contact. And then once the truly medical part of the procedure begins, we will make sure to wear proper gloves.
The thing when massaging beards is it's more about being like slow and firm. So you're not like twisting and pulling on the tissues. And even though the hairs I know grow in all different directions, you tend to want to go more in like a downward motion. How's that feeling, Van? Mm-hmm. It's really good. Okay. If you're feeling adventurous, you can do a little bit of tugging and pulling just like you would on a scalp. Just because it feels good, I think. Does it feel good, Van? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for this. <laughs> And this is my favorite move on the ears. When you come off, you want to come off kind of slow. Again, not really fast movements. This bowl of water I'm going to use to cleanse their face. And then I will replace the water and start with new fresh water once we start the microneedling treatment. So absolutely no bacteria will be in the water once I start the medical procedure. All right, so now we're gonna do the second cleanse. I always like to do a purifying or exfoliating cleanser as the second cleanse to really get in there and clean out the pores. As you know, no pores get absolutely filthy. This is also the cleanse that I'm gonna use a sonic device Studies do show that using, depending on the different devices, but depending on the devices, they can and do cleanse pores up to 11 times better than hand cleansing alone. And because we're getting ready to needle the skin, I want to get the pores as clean as possible. I don't wanna be needling in all the pollution in the gunk. The other thing you can do is if you have a hydrofacial device or hydrofacial-like device, two or three days before the treatment, even a day before, go ahead and do the, one of those. Vacuum out those pores, clean out those pores. And then the day of the treatment, I just use a sonic device. So we're just gonna go in and start. You wanna go ahead and sonic their face for about two minutes. That's how long it takes when they've done the studies about the pore cleansing and 11 times better than hand washing alone. It's a two minute cleanse. It's also why like on many of like Clarisonic devices and things like that, they have the timers. Um, Cause it's like, you can't really get it any cleaner after two minutes, so. Really get on the sides of the nose. Look at my little helper over here. So now is the moment that they can go ahead and have their nice hot steamy towel. And then after this, there's no more fluff. All the fluff goes by night. So how I like to do my hot towels, is I like to pull them low like this and I grab this just for their own comfort. And I really push the hot towel into their chest muscles. And when it comes to towel work, I go really slow because it just feels better. Do a little pressing on the eyes and a slight head rocking. And I just slowly work the pressure of the heat all the way around. Slight rocking, it's very soothing to the nervous system. Any type of slower movements are gonna be more calming to the body, to the nervous system. So it's one of the reasons why I really don't rush. I love cupping the ears. I do remember that Van had some larger earrings, so I'll be conscious of that. I'm gonna find the center, pull down. I'm rocking down towards the table, up towards me. And then 
again, you want to go slow. It's just so much more soothing to the nervous system. Just very gently remove the cleanser from their face. And very slowly pull it across your neck. Don't be in a rush. How did that feel, Shannon, going slow? Felt great. Okay. 